Hey guys, I'm gonna find uh, cosecant, secant, and cotangent of various angles using the unit circle. So I already have one video out there where I find sine, cosine, and tangent uh, using the unit circle. So if you have not seen that, I highly recommend watching that first because uh, I'm gonna move a little bit faster on this one because we are building here. So to do cosecant, secant, and cotangent, the first thing you need to remember is Remember how sine and cosecant are connected? Cosine and secant are connected. Tangent, cotangent are tangent and cotangent are connected. That if you know sine, cosine, and tangent, all you have to do is find the reciprocal, and that gives you the reciprocal of sine is cosecant. The, the reciprocal of cosine is secant. The reciprocal of tangent is cotangent. Just flip it will give you those corresponding trig functions. So. How we're going to be able to tackle cosecant, secant, cotangent is basically if you want to know cosecant, find sine of the equivalent angle and just we're going to flip it. And I'll show you how this all works mathematically in our examples. If you want to find secant, really look for cosine of that same angle and we're going to flip it. And then uh, as I talked about in the other video, tangent would be sine divided by cosine. So if we flip that, we're just going to find cosine divided by sine for cotangent. If we use these pieces here, we're going to be able to find cosecant, secant, and cotangent very easily. So it's really, hey, if you know sine and cosine, which is what I reviewed in my other video, you can pretty much accomplish any of these other trig functions. So here we go. I'm starting with cosecant of pi over 3. So we're going to reference our unit circle here, and if I look for pi over 3, we're right up here. And remember, uh, cosine is the x, sine is the y. So if I want cosecant of pi over 3, what we're going to find is we're going to find out 1 divided by sine of pi over 3. So sine of pi over 3, cosine is x, sine is y. We're going to have 1 divided by square root of 3 over 2. Now, as I had talked already, in order to find a cosecant, it's the reciprocal of sine, which means we're going to take this fraction, square root of 3 over 2, and we're going to flip it. So we're going to get 2 over the square root of 3. And I've shown in class how the math works out here, but this is what we end up with. So 2 over the square root of 3. Now, 2 over the square root of 3 is nice, but we don't have everything simplified and especially this denominator. We cannot have a square root in the denominator, so we need to rationalize the denominator. The, the way we're going to do that is we're going to multiply the bottom by the square root of 3. I've shown this in several videos now, so hopefully it's become pretty easy now. And on top, in the numerator, you're going to get 2 square root of 3. And then denominator, when you take a square root of 3 times square root of 3, you just get 3. So 2 square root of 3 over 3. So if I want to find cosecant of negative 240 degrees, and I've talked in the other video about many ways we could find uh, negative angle measures. Uh, you could add 360 to that. Uh, you could just look at where 240 is and count the number of, you know, how far we're traveling there and just count it the opposite direction. You could also look at, you know, we're at 240 degrees, reflect it up. We're up here at... 120. So negative 240 plus 360 is 120. So we're going to be focusing on this angle right here, but before I jump into it, if I want to find cosecant of negative 240 degrees, we're really going to find 1 divided by sine of negative 240 degrees. So if I look at where I was at, I want sine, that's the y coordinate, we're going to have square root of 3 over 2. So Believe it or not, different angle measure, same result. So 1 divided by square root of 3 over 2. Take the reciprocal, you get 2 over the square root of 3. And again, rationalize that denominator. Cannot leave square roots down there. So multiply top and bottom by the square root of 3. We get 2 square root of 3 over 3. So that was cosecant. Uh, so let's move on to secant. So I'm going to find the secant of 30 degrees, but remember secant and cosine are tied together, so we're really going to find cosine of 30 degrees. Once we know that, we're going to flip it. So over here with secant of 2 pi over 3, we're really going to find cosine of 
2 pi over 3, take the reciprocal, and that will give us our answer. So I'll start with sigma of 30 degrees, so really I'm looking for cosine of 30 degrees. Referencing the unit circle, 30 degrees, we are here. Cosine would be the x value, so I get square root of 3 over 2. So 1 divided by square root of 3 over 2. Again, we're going to take the reciprocal, which means flip it. So really we have 2 over the square root of 3. And as you can kind of see what's happening here is I had different trig functions, different uh, angle measures, radian measures, and sometimes you still end up with the same answer. So rationalize that denominator, you get 2 square root of 3 over 3. So my next one, we already switched it over. It's going to be 1 divided by cosine of 2 pi over 3. So I'm going to try and find 2 pi over 3 on here, which is, use this angle before, but we want cosine. So I'm going to use negative 1 over 2. So this equals 1 divided by negative 1 over 2. In order to find the trig function here, we're going to take this, uh, the cosine of 2 pi over 3, or to take the reciprocal, which we flip it, you get negative 2 over 1, which this can be simplified because negative 2 over 1 or 2 divided by 1, we get negative 2. And finally, we're going to move on to our last trig uh, function we're going to deal with, which is cotangent. Now, tangent, again, we talked about being sine divided by cosine, but again, with these Cosecant, secant, and cotangent, we've been taking the reciprocal, flipping them. So really, we're going to deal with cosine of 210 degrees divided by sine of 210 degrees. So hopefully at this point, we're really, really strong with finding cosine and sine. So let's find that 210 degrees all the way over here. Uh, so I need cosine first, so that's the x-coordinates, negative square root of 3 over 2. So over here, negative square root of 3 over 2, divided by sine of that same angle, which sine here was negative 1 over 2. And we have talked about in class how this all simplifies, and uh, what we had found is twos are gone, so really we're left with a negative square root of three divided by a negative one. Now when you have two negatives that divide, that makes it positive, and then square root of three divided by one, divided by one is not going to change anything here, so we just get a square root of three. And then to our last example, cotangent of pi. Again, we're dealing with reciprocals here, so we're going to find cosine of pi divided by sine of pi. So again, go back to that unit circle, find pi, which is over here. I need cosine of pi, which is going to be negative 1, divided by sine of pi. I don't know if that was on the screen. Cosine of pi is negative 1. Sine of pi, I'm going to find that one now. So cosine was negative 1. Sine, again, O is the y coordinate. My, my part of that coordinate, so 0. So I have negative 1 divided by 0. And now this is where a lot of students get caught, is they immediately assume, oh, I see a 0 there, the answer is 0. That is incorrect. Whenever you have division by 0, we cannot do that. We cannot divide by 0. So what's going to happen here is this trig function is undefined. There is no cotangent of pi. So we left without a defined. So be careful whenever you're dividing by zero when you're going through your six trig functions. And that was finding cosecant, secant, and cotangent of angles using the unit circle.